Warning, do not listen to this podcast if hearing about freedom and liberty is not legal for you in your community. And if so, you should immediately move to a hipper community. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Podcast, a weekly web lab where Michael W. Dean and Nima Vadadi cover the punk rockinist, hip hopinist current events, as well as timeless universal truths about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, because there's no such thing as half free. The Freedom Fiends Podcast, available from freedomfiends.com. That's F R E E D O M F E E N S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com, the Liberty Radio Network, and No Agenda Global Radio. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Distance Learning Anarchy Series with Freedom Fiends Michael W. Dean. Broadcasting from my windowless bunker. And Nima Vidati. Go, go, Freedom Fiends! We're recording. Nima, Yo, we found what's Nima. Up, man? Yeah, it's like the 30 Rock where Tracy Jordan goes to Cleveland and no one can find him on his six <laughs> his six cell phones. I just watched that. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's yeah. a great show. I haven't watched any of the new season. Is it any good? Yeah, I say it's better than any of the other ones. It's friggin' really? ama- it's amazing and they like bust harder on General Electric than they ever have. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It's weird. Okay. Okay. But they are General Electric. It's you know. Or did or they weird. used to be? But they are now. They still NBC are. is uh, owned by General Electric. Yeah, I thought I thought they were bought out by uh, the people who Cable Town is making fun of. Who's that? Comcast. <sighs> That's what someone said. Yeah. Uh, no, I did. I did also find that on the wiki. I think. Uh, uh, they're but, still owned. They're st- uh, still owned by General Electric. Yeah. Okay. They were. They used to be owned by RCA. Oh wait, they're yeah. They're well. They're kind of owned by like four people. It's like General Electric, Vivendi, NBC Universal, and uh, the Shinehart uh-huh. Wig Company. <laughs> nice. Okay. So Com- Comcast just sort of bought into the the system rather yeah. than buying it from the system. So I couldn't find you today. Well, I've been trying to hold you for three hours. I like called your your brother. He called your mother and got your wife's phone number. And I called her and emailed her and. I had your whole family like fucking <laughs> thinking you were dead in a ditch because you uh oh. your phone your new phone powers down when it's done charging. I don't think th- maybe that's not what happened. <clears throat> I don't know if I want to throw the shot at the phone yet. We'll see what happened. But yeah, the phone was off. I did plug it in last night and it was fully charged. I'm guessing what happened was maybe it died like right before I plugged it into charge like in- when it was in my pocket. You know, because it was on as I was driving home, but maybe it died before I, you know, actually plugged it in and uh I know some phones, I think, if you plug them in when they're dead, they'll stay dead and won't turn back on until you turn them on again. Maybe I, was, I, was, I was not ready to replace you for good, but I was ready to replace you for the day. I called Ben Quaker and asked him if he could do it. Because <laughs> really? the show must go on, man. Yeah, the show must uh, go on. I was burning thought, the podcast. I feel like I've been thought, let out. You thought I would be gone all day? Or I feel what? like I've been let out of a pod cage, man. I'm, I'm ready to roll. Yeah, I called Ben. <laughs> ben is like, yeah, I'd love to do it, but I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in my car driving to a funeral. Mm, wow, wow, and and I think he actually that, that is how much you want to podcast. You know, all bugged, people I who are bugged. on their way to the dad's funerals, <laughs> and, he, and he called my whole family. Wow, yeah, wow, yeah. I was ready ne- to like never, never question Michael's passion for. Liberty. I had I had Charlie sitting on my desk putting a, putting a microphone in front of her. <laughs> I was gonna call Frank too. I was gonna say, well, Frank, he's he's a Vidati. This will work. We can, but he's at work. <laughs> <laughs> He's at work. He can't be at work yet, man. I mm-hmm. thought he was a bartender. Who's drinking at at, at noon? Frank, <laughs> probably. <laughs> so Frank wrote a good review of uh, the gun training with the non aggression principle DVD, and it's on um, Cop Block. His first nice. article for Cop Block. That's awesome. Kudos yep. and congratulations, Frank. Yep, got got some interesting news here about pod beefs and things like that. Um, wow, did you send me a? A message on on some on a pigeon. I'm trying to message you on pigeon, and it's it's like in a loop. Or it wasn't yeah, because you because you didn't you didn't did you refresh it? Start. I private always refresh, man. That is like I always do it, and you're like you never refresh, but I always click private well, and I click refresh private conversation, and sometimes it'll just like scroll through. I know. Like I'm 
I'm Tons turning it of paragraphs. off. I'm turning it off. I don't need that crap. Don't need pigeons. I got you. I finally got you, man. I got you right mm-hmm. here. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, we have a couple new policies. One is that the um, the comments on the Fiend's blog and the Fiend site and all my blogs now the newest comment is first instead of last. And the reason I did that is because we have a new site, uh, a new page on the Freedom Fiends blog of torrents where Sean Diwali is uh, archiving all the torrent links as well as doing it on um, on uh, the Twitters because Twitter after a year or so, like you can't, you can't find the, uh, the posts anymore. Hmm. So hmm. we're, that's kind of lame. Why Why do that? I kind of feel like one of the beauties of the internet age is you don't ever have to lose anything that you do or write. It like, automatically exists on the internet forever. Well, Twitter's kind of like the digital chalk on the sidewalk, you know? And I think, yeah. yeah, I, I think, get that. And I, I mean, I'm that's sure, sort of their philosophy. I'm sure part of it is so they don't have to buy so many million more servers. But uh, I was thinking that too, yeah. Is it a cost but part thing? of it is just it kind of goes along with the thing of like, well, today I'm having a cheese sandwich for lunch, you know? <laughs> that doesn't need to be preserved for the ages. No, man, it's just chalk on the sidewalk waiting for the Maybe rain. Maybe it does. I mean, like future... Um, Future people who are, you know, what, what are they called? Archaeologists are going to be digging and, and finding people's tweets. They, 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 I guess they can't, but wouldn't that be cool? There's some you sites know, that ate, ate for breakfast and all there's, that. There's a few sites that uh, that re that save twi- tweets, but um, not for for that long and not consistently like all of them. Like when mm. when uh, when I realized from posts on YouTube that uh, um, what's his name, the movie critic, had blogged my. Had tweeted my little video about my daughter dying. Roger Ebert should eat less fatty foods. Yeah, Roger Ebert. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I knew he'd done it. It was like two and a half years ago, and I couldn't find it. I went to like ten sites that that archive Twitter's tweeter twats, twats. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, someone else finally found it for me. Like, uh, I don't, uh, I don't know where, okay. but yeah, you know. yeah. Well, um, I think you can get your your tweets to automatically go to your Facebook. You know, as comments or wall posts for your own Facebook page, we could do that for like the guns and weed page, or I mean, we the actually page. we actually have that. I think for um for the t- for the tweet for Sean's tweets about the uh, about go get the torrent. Like, yeah, I took it here. off because it was just like confusing and weird, and like you know, go mm. subscribe if you want. So, <laughs> speaking of YouTube, I had some some heinous comments on YouTube on the. Uh, and I've always said that YouTube has like the most heinous con- comments. And this, I think this was yeah. a teenager living in his mother's house from based on like the videos he liked. Uh, it was all like MMA and uh, like video game stuff. World of Warcraft. Like, really violent video game stuff. He commented uh, on the gun training with the non-aggression principle. Um, You're a fucking idiot. And was I he went, talking to you or was he maybe I talking to another commenter? No, he was talking to me. Because sometimes trolls try to pick fights with people who are commenting on the page. Well, I checked this guy out. He's a, he's a troller. Um, but uh, I don't know. Uh, he might have been talking to the guy in the video, Jared, or he might have been talking to me. And mm-hmm. I went and looked him up and like, you know, he's in Australia. He's a video gamer. And I said, you know, he said, you're a fucking idiot. I said, so says the guy who lives in a country where you can't own guns. And the only gun you've ever had held in your hand was in a video game. <laughs> and and then well, well or are you implying he's an idiot because of that because that's kind of equally collectivist or not I know equally collectivist, I know but, but then but then he but then he commented back you're a fucking idiot and I hope you die in a ditch uh, uh, uh okay okay he, he he's just trying to piss people off man that, yeah. that gets them off for some reason I pissed off of, I pissed off a fan today a fiend fan um oh uh, did you yeah we have yeah man I've been up pissing people off since you were like going to, <laughs> going to bed man. <laughs> Seriously, seriously. So we have another new policy, which is um, policy, man. When did we start coming up with all these new policies? Like, do I have to sign the new bylaw agreement or what? No, you just you're part of the, <laughs> the fiend social contract by by not oh, okay. answering your phone, man. I just approve it. Got it. Got it. Um, hey, it's our private property. We can do that, and you could always, you know. Yeah, I know. I'm just say I'm f just you kidding. and go start the Nema fiends or something. But uh, I couldn't. I couldn't. I don't think you would. Yeah, I'd I love probably it. wouldn't. I'd love it if you did. I mean, you know, but I'd love it if I did. I'd love it if you yeah. left. <laughs> no, podcast. I'd love it if you started something else too. Um, yeah, uh, people writing me on Facebook and saying, "Please like my page. Please like me." Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, is like literally like they wrote yes. those words. Yes. Who would write that? Please, please, please like, like my, page. my new page. Yeah. No, no. Um, don't ask me to like it. 
Tell me about yeah. it. If I like it, I like it. I know. That's the thing. Yeah. It's, I mean, think of it in real life. If someone like, you know, please like me, please right, like right. my band, you know, right, please right. like my movie. <laughs> Um, well, I do it all the time. I say please, please. I say please comment or review on iTunes, and people should yeah, that's review different, us on though. iTunes. That, that, that's but. saying that's saying say something about this. Well, yeah. no, it's usually I usually say that when people say they like something, I say, "Cool, can you go put it somewhere that matters, like iTunes or uh, Amazon?" Uh, not the uh, digital, you know, the not me. Not don't the, tell me. Tell everybody else. <laughs> not, I already yeah, know it's awesome. not not the chalk on the sidewalk that is Facebook. That you know everything goes away and no one can read it except the government. And does, and does everything go away on Facebook? You. I thought like you could go it back and buried. see all your old. It's, yeah, yeah, but you know, it does get buried. But yeah. you can dig for it. You can still find it. I think putting the comment, making our our blog so the comments are at the top, is kind of influenced by Facebook and Reddit too. That's how they do it. And I got I thought comments. Reddit. The, the, what was at the top was voted up to the top. We could do, could uh, we do it, something no, like that. It is on the front page. Uh, but and, but the. The but posts in themselves, an individual the comments thread. in them. Right. Ah, got it. Right. Okay. okay. Um, are chronological with uh, newest first. So, okay. Uh, I wrote a blog post called um, Why I Hope Romney Wins, which people should go check yeah. out on the Fiends blog, which is, uh, and then I re- reposted on libertarianpunk.com as uh, an anarchist explains why he hopes Romney wins. And I posted them, one of each, the same article on Reddit. Anarcho capitalist subreddit and the libertarian subreddit. And the anarcho capitalists are like totally voting it up. And nice. the libertarians are voting it down and then arguing really? why. Then, and then a lot of them are arguing like why. Well, you know, I think Obama is really the lesser of the two evils here and I hope he wins. No, that, see, that's <laughs> engaging in the actual process. What you I know, were doing I know. Was, was trying to let people know that the, this, if Romney wins, it'll let people know how screwed up the process is. I yeah. Mean, First the, of all, it, I'd like, I'd love to see a bunch of liberals screaming. Secondly, I think I think Obama being the tyrant for four years has driven every libertarian who thought he was a Republican or conservative to libertarianism and on on towards anarcho capitalism. And when Ron Paul loses, there are going to be a million new anarchists the next morning. Um, you know, I just I just think it's time for for Romney to do that to the smart Democrats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're totally right about that. And you know, I also think that. Uh, Every four years, if we have a new person and the whole point of the election is, wow, everything's so horrible, nobody likes the direction the country is going in, let's change it. And if that keeps not actually changing anything, and we just keep having it every four years as opposed to maybe every eight years, maybe Americans have that long term of a memory where they can remember four years ago and, hey, it still sucked then. So yeah. maybe it'll, it'll help to denigrate or, or discredit the, presiden- the presidency anyway. Yep. So this other new policy we have is for submitting show prep. Basically, um, if people want to submit ideas for news items that the fiends should cover or something they want the fiends to cover, uh, I don't think this bugs you as much as it bugs me, but it, I, I get so many Facebook notifications and emails to my private email, personal email address, and we get a bunch to talkbacktofreedomfiends.com, which we've invited people to do in the past. And that was kind of well, this guy's. Well, you could do like I do and only check your private messages and not your notifications. <laughs> I just let him roll and roll. Yeah, and roll. we do. We determined yesterday that Nima never, uh, Nima didn't even know what the little red dots were at the top of Facebook. Oh, or, I knew what the red dots were, man. I just never cared just to click them. on the globe. Yeah. I, I don't ignore them. I, I, every time I have one for friends, I'll accept them. Every time I have a message, I check it out and I'll respond. I get lots of private messages, but everything else is, you know. Stuff that I could look at on my wall or stuff that I don't need to look at unless I go there. I guess if I was, you know, obsessed with Facebook, I'd be on it all the time. Like me. Like you. I'm obsessed <laughs> with hating it. So, um. You are. You have this love hate relationship. No, I, don't think, I, I hate I, it. If Facebook ended the, uh, tomorrow, what would you do? You'd be so pissed off. You would have I'd be pissed more off than for postpartum a, depression. I'd, I'd be pissed off. No, I'd be pissed off for a day. And I'd probably, like, forget and get up in the middle of the night and try to check it anyway. Um. You'd be but, checking it for like a year. No, <laughs> I'd be no, it. I'd be, no? I'd be doing. I'd start another podcast. Um, yeah, and I actually <laughs> yeah, have a theory. Have that much more time. I mean, Facebook is getting so screwed up. Like the other day, you know, I had it so all my posts were friends only, and they changed it without telling anybody to where everything's public, and you have to mm-hmm. like, if you want it friends only, you have to do it on each post. Which I don't like because you know I don't want to. I don't want to argue with idiots with you know Obama humping. Uh, labor union guys that want to eat my face for saying but, but, but you don't Obama have to argue with them see that's the thing like I'll, yes I'll, like, I do yes well, here, I do what I, I do is to. 
is I'll argue th with them when I feel like it. And also, that's what not checking the notifications does, is I'll see something on my wall, and I'll be like, wow, that's so square, that's so status. <laughs> and so I'll complain about it, and I'll, let, I'll drop, you know, the mad libertarian sil science or the macho libertarian flash. And then I'll just walk away. You know, I just drop you should, it. You should drop away. it. I, I walk away from the convo, man. I drop it and then block them when they respond after they ah, hit it. Okay, so, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, you think you're so special just because you have a life outside the internet. <laughs> F you, man. <laughs> you have family that loves you and you want to hang out with them. And I got my yeah. wife, but you know, she likes being on the computer too. But she likes but to. She, she also likes to read books. So what are you supposed yeah. to do while she reads books? Yeah. You yeah, gotta, you so. gotta make media or yell at people on the internet. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we have this new. Po I have this new policy where if you want to submit a news item to the Freedom Fiends. You should go to the Freedom Fiends uh, website, and there's a link up at the top that says Submit News Items. And you go there, and you post it as a comment. Before you post it as a comment, please read uh, the recent comments and see if someone else has done this. Because part of the problem is I get 10, 20, 30 of the same thing in a week. You know, people mm -hmm. saying, hey, have you seen this news item? Have you seen this news? And it's like, it's I'm basically trying to deal with future shock and, like, information overload. Yeah. So. I would appreciate it if people want to submit stuff. If you want to write us and talk to us about something, write to talk back. If you yeah, just talk wanna, back is great too. Yeah, you know. No, but I don't want I don't want news items coming in to talk back. Is what I'm saying. Even though we've said in every episode, you know, hey, and had these little bumps. I want to change yeah. the policy. And I think we still will get them, and maybe we shouldn't get angry. Hopefully, the, the number will reduce. Well, we don't get yeah, angry. I don't. There'll be people that are listening to past episodes and hear that. Right. And we'll do even it on the streaming. Yeah. Uh, maybe we need to make a new bump to put, you know, into the streaming feed too. Ah, that's yeah. a good idea. That's a good idea. Making a note right now. Yeah. Uh, Plus, making bumps is fun. So prep bump. So note to um, self. Yeah. So yeah. What I've been doing is when people post something on Facebook that's a news item or send me an email that's a news item, I have a cut and paste thing that says. New policy. From now on, please submit <laughs> Fiend's show ideas, news item, and such at the below link. Below link, And please check at, at the comments to see if it's been submitted already. Thanks. So I sent this to, uh, I've sent it to like five or six people. And uh, I, I got it from, um, let's see, please check the comments. Okay. So I sent it to a guy today who's a big fan of the fiends. Um, I guess I, I've never talked to him before, but he sent me something about, um, what is it? Uh, immunizations, you know, containing uh, poison, which is uh -huh. definitely a good topic. It's not something we generally talk about much because there's so many people who've researched it in so much more depth that, uh, and it's kind of a tyranny today, which we're trying to get away from, but you know, Alex Jones has done a hundred hours on this subject. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, we should I'll, maybe weigh in on it at some point. I feel like it's a news you can use. I'll weigh on it. I don't, I don't have now. kids yet. You know, I'll say nobody should be able to make anybody get anything, period. Yeah. And we actually... Yeah. But, but we what, actually about, what about getting it yourself, like your kids, like when you have kids? That, we, that's actually an did, we, actually did a, we actually did an episode on this an hour uh, a year ago. An hour ago. I know. A year ago. I know. But it's okay. It's okay to follow up and update things. Yeah. Anyway, but, go back to your So point. this guy sends me this link. I sent him my cut and paste. He writes back... Um, like a real kind of snippy, like, hey, you know, if you want to censor what people are sending you, then then I guess you're like the freedom Nazi or something like that. You know, <laughs> wow, wow. Like, you know, no, he said, we don't, uh, we don't want to censor it. We want to filter well, it to make it I don't, easier. I don't think he even read the link. You know, I think he just mm. thought I was saying like, I don't know. He said, just trying to spread ideas, info as, as anyone concerned of the shape of things. And I said, like I said, I'd prefer not to get this by email now. Please read the info at the link below. Thank you. So all, all you're back. basically doing is saying like, if you're in an office, Hey, put it in my box, my yeah, inbox, not, yeah. not directly on my desk. Yeah. Kind of. Thing. So he writes yeah. back and says, okay, why don't you just let me know what the list of approved topics are? Mr. Liberty. No. no. And I wrote back, I'm just trying to climb out from under a mountain of incoming emails. He wrote it back. I promoted your show on my Facebook page, 500 plus friends and 1300 subscribers, but that will be deleted. And I said, I said, your page, your property. And he says, I'm going back to Free Talk Live. Much more amicable people. And uh, wow. I don't know about that. They're they're cranky bastards and we love them for it. But, <laughs> and this is what I wrote back to him. I actually got the idea of a show prep submission link from them. They have a section on their site for that. Try emailing an idea to them. It won't get on the air. They insist it's submitted through their site. Yeah, yeah. He wrote back. Hang on. He wrote back, and now you can get back to your metaphorical book burning. 
And I said, huh. having a method to streamline incoming information is not censorship. It's trying to deal with the 200 plus emails a day I get. We're actually going to cover some of the things submitted through our site this week on today's cast. Uh, and then he wrote back, what am I supposed to read your mind as is to what is approved material? And I said, if you read that link, there's He's nothing not about covered <laughs> topics, only about where we'd like them submitted. We get the same thing submitted each week. But, and this is the kind of shit I deal with, okay? Uh, this is why I'm trying to streamline having stuff sent to us because in addition to the like, you know, 10 news items submitted over and over and over by 10 different people or 20 different people a week, I have conversations like this with people trying to explain to them, I'm not a Nazi, I'm not a book burner, you're misunderstanding me. I do this shit all day, 24-7. Nima does the cast and goes. He's gone. You know, I'm on here doing this 24-7. I got up like nine hours ago ready to do this and I've been working on stuff ever since. I was up until five hours before that working on Fiend stuff, you know, so... Uh, if I've seen a little cranky lately, it's because now that we're doing three shows and I'm on a diet, my body fucking hates me. Um, you know, I'm a little stressed out. Nima's a little stressed out. We're all a little stressed out. Yeah, yeah. We love what we do, but it it sounds like part of it here. was was the communication uh problems with you know talking to each other on the internet. For some reason, the guy just wasn't getting that you were telling him where to. Put well, he stuff, just went to. to you know, there's actually he a, thing, to a conclusion, but yeah. maybe he's maybe he's cranky too. Maybe he's stressed out. Maybe he's got marital problems or or whatever the case is. I'm not trying to say he does, but maybe he's got his own problems. You guys were both just uh, rankled and and got into it. That's fine. Um, but for future reference, yeah, throw it on on the the site on the little page Michael made, and and we've already got some submissions there, and it's good stuff. And also, it's it's great because it's more transparent, right? So listeners can go and see uh, some of the source material we're using, you know, right on our page. Like, oh, did they did they they talk about this no maybe they like talking about this look they talked about this for 30 minutes yeah kind of a thing yeah it's kind, yeah. Of, it's kind of open source you know yeah and there's not really a method to vote it up like free talk live has but there is you can comment on it and say yeah i'd love to hear about that right right and if you know 10 people comment on it and demand it the fiends must talk about this then more power to yeah you. so one of the things that someone submitted on there uh did you see that email i sent you with the uh, anarchy I thing. I was I was just gonna bring it up. Yes, the the post. No, what what is that? A flyer. It's yeah, a, flyer a flyer. It's been hung up all around Oakland. Read the flyer. Yeah. All right, Doom is here on October twenty fifth, two thousand twelve. Convene downtown Oakland all day. Stand up and defend the great city of Oakland. Occupy. Beat the shit out of anarchists and vandals. Aim to maim sounds like the the title of the event. It's um, <laughs> self imposed <laughs> leadership unite. Self imposed leadership sounds unite. like a new uh, metal band. Aim yeah. to maim. Aim ATM. To maim. ATM. And it's it, get this. It's BYOB uh, in parentheses. Bring your own bat. Weapons encouraged. <laughs> wow, the statists are violent, huh? They really are. And you know they're going after lefty anarchists who generally don't have guns, and especially in Oakland. So. Yeah. Well, also, I guess they're kind of confused on what anarchist is. It seems they want to. Uh, it's kind of like gay bashing, but they want to bash people who wear black, apparently, and balaclavas. I don't know. And they say at the bottom, there's a racial thing in it too. It said like pick out. Oh, it's white. white. Yeah, white terrorists. Yeah. White domestic terrorists. Yeah. So who knows if black people put this up or if it's white people trying to start a race war or make the blacks look back? Now read the bottom line about uh, martial law. Ah, if you don't want martial law in Oakland, then the anarchists slash vandals must go defend our Oakland movement. So I'd say that's like blaming the problem of the state on the state and acting like the state to try to keep the state away. Yeah, it's just right for the state. They don't, they don't have any concept of the idea of non-state and non-violence. Now, I would say that if you were a, um, you know, I think in Libair, if you owned a, 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 you know, a store or a coffee uh -huh. shop or something and someone... Yeah. Whether they were in black clothing or not, or whether they're white or not, and they came up and started trying to vandalize your shit, I think you uh, you would have right to use some force, physical right. force. You know, yeah. I think you'd have a right to swing a bat or point a gun at someone who's about to trash your office. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, trash um, your Starbucks. You know, by the way, the in the continental United States, the town that is the furthest away from any Starbucks is in Wyoming. It's in Alta, Wyoming, and it's 170 miles from the nearest Starbucks. Nice, nice. Yeah. Alta, what part of the state? Like what? No, it's it's direction? actually on the, it's it's like on the border of Idaho, so it's kind of uh, ah, you know, that okay. part of Idaho and Wyoming. 
So I'm guessing it's that far south uh, of or north of Jackson. I it's bet in Teton County. Really? Yeah. Huh. Actually, the the actual spot that is the furthest in America, continental United States, from a Starbucks is in um, is in Yellowstone. But uh, <laughs> nice, nice. But the town is Alta. What what prompted you to look that up? Are you a Starbucks hater or what? Man, I told you I've been up doing show prep, doing show prep, man. Yeah, but why, yeah, but why that? I don't know. Oh, because the um, I got that one from the um, the what's the little uh, toolbar we have at the top that measures rank? Alexa, uh, the Alexa, the Alexa bar. ranking. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah, so let's go sell some stuff. Okay. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Adam Curry's No Agenda Global Radio, streaming live every Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. East Coast U.S. time. Listen live at nagradio.com. That's nagradio.com. Call in soon before they get droned. Hi, I'm Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends, and like you, I'm concerned with privacy on the internet. The electronic police state is strangling our previous protections, and the central scrutinizer is trying to squint into all areas of our lives. That's why smart people surf the net with a VPN or virtual private network. I use a VPN from Bola VPN. Bola VPN has your utmost security in mind and will allow you to surf, email, and do other computing tasks without leaving a trail of breadcrumbs across the internet. Unlike many other VPN providers, Bola VPN doesn't log traffic. With Bola VPN, you can change your apparent location or disappear completely. Bola VPN has been around since 2007, which is OG in the VPN world. Bola VPN is easy to install and configure. Best of all, it can be had for less than 25 cents a day, which is a small price to pay for this much security. And if you open a support ticket saying you heard about them through the Freedom Fiends, they'll add three extra days free. That's Bola VPN at B O L E H V P N dot net. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyper speed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures made with genetically engineered features. And corporate villains crave the opportunity to steal a profit from a mother's ingenuity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. I'm ready to go. Right. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Michael's ready. He's ready. Bring yeah. it back. Bring it back. So, I'm, ready. I'm ready. Did you see this thing about um, using the First Amendment to end the First Amendment? Yeah, I did. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. I think maybe we should read that too. Was, yeah, that, the, was that also submitted in the show prep? Uh, yeah. No, no, no. Um, no, no, no. I was. I found that. But now nah, people stop submitting show prep. They think I'm a cranky bastard and don't want anything to do with it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... Um, yeah, the White House, you know, on the White House, they have a thing where you can do a petition and people can sign it, which mm -hmm. is part of the First Amendment, you know, addressing the grievances of your government. Yeah, and the, and there's and some the, good ones there. They're like end the drug war and, and there's some good stuff that people yeah. have done. Not, not, that, not that the White House really listens, but they like to have the suggestion box in yeah. front of their, their and, uh, castle. Well, you know, it's also how they keep track of who believes what and who needs to be droned eventually. But ah, there um, There's actually a petition on here. Uh, we petitioned the Obama administration to outlaw offending the prophets of the major religion, yeah, major yeah. religions. Although th theirs wasn't as grammatically clear as I know. Your I kind of corrected it, it <laughs> and it's still awkward. Yeah. And they've got um, 27,982 signatures to uh, basically get rid of the First Amendment by making it illegal yeah, to practice yeah. the First Amendment. Yeah, and when I read it, I was like, "Wow!" Because okay, I'll read. We'll read the whole thing. And I read it before I actually saw the page views because I was looking at it on my smartphone, or not the page views, but the actual number of people who signed. Well, they've it. met their goal. It, it, their goal was twenty five thousand, and I think it's a thing of like, if it reaches the goal, the president will look at it and think about it or something. Yeah, yeah. I think I bet, like he's, I bet he's already I thought he's about like, it. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I couldn't believe it after I read it, seeing that that many people in the country just signed a petition like this. 
I, I like think sign a petition to say say there should be no free speech. I think that Obama, Obama or Romney, Obama, I think either of them would love to add any new laws they can because they want to make you know if you're a felon, you know if if, if you're if you're arrested for something and convicted, you know even a misdemeanor. I mean, you make work for government tax yeah. eaters, and if yep, you're a yep. felon. They can take away your guns. They can uh, come into your house anytime they want if you're on parole or probation. You know, I mean, basically. And your right to vote. Yeah. And your right to vote. Yeah. So, uh, man, offending, uh, outlaw offending prophets right. major religions. So, so we'll, we'll read the actual te- text of this. So you, I think you got to get a sense of just how ridiculous the petition is. It's more more ridiculous than just its title. So, to enact a law that prohibits any action or literature that offends prophets of major religions. Moses, Jesus, Muhammad. Now, why just, there. why just major religions? What, what about minor religions? Yeah, yeah religions? exactly. Who, who gets to choose the religions? <laughs> I mean, and these are all Semitic religions. They all share the same root. What about, what about Hindu gods, right? Yeah. I mean, what, what about things what about that would offend Buddhists? Although, I don't, Buddhists probably don't get offended. They're too, <laughs> you know, enlightened. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, who gets to choose that? Um, yeah. And then, okay, I'll, go, I'll continue. Such acts offend billions of people and cause unrest in the world. <laughs> and cause unrest in the world. Th- that's really what causes the unrest? Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's not, you know, major world powers throwing their armies and their bombs into the country without permission. It's, uh, exactly. it's words. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. YouTube videos. And not, not just killing brown people. Because, okay, it's more than that. It's not like the, the American foreign policy just goes in there and kills people wantonly. It's, it's killing them if they don't submit to our rule and our edicts and our sock puppets that then torture them. I saw a really good sign on uh, Will Coley's new site today. Um, it said, Dear Obama, if one of your bombs kills a child in the Middle East, that child's father will go to war with you regardless of what he ever thought about before. You know, mm-hmm. regardless of mm-hmm. Al-Qaeda or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. I mean, think about it. You know, think about American patriots. You know, think about like... If someone from another country dropped a bomb and killed your kid, you would yeah. want to go to war with those people. You would go to yeah, war with those people. Yeah, and so I mean, Scott Horton people, said yeah. that too. He said, you know, if I happen to have been born in Afghanistan and your bomb killed my wife or whatever, strap a bomb on me. I'm ready to go kind of a thing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they just don't get it. And whoever wrote this petition doesn't get that. They don't get that that's the reason why there's unrest. They're not nothing very, to do um, with what people have, are saying. They don't have very good punctuation either. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, if you got uh, 25,000, 27,000 people, don't you think one of them can form a complete sentence and you get him to write it instead or her? (laughs) Well, is there no editing? Like, that'd be nice, too, if you could edit, have people edit the petitions. It should be a wiki. It should be a A wiki. wiki. Can you imagine what this, can you imagine what this petition would be for by the time, (laughs) you know, by now if it was a wiki? Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's kind of how, how the government works anyway, right? They're always changing and amending. And, the government and, is a wiki that the people are not allowed to con- yeah, participate yeah. in. It's a private tyranny wiki. Or it's or in a way, it's a wiki that everybody is allowed to participate in adding new violence and new oppression. Mm-hmm. You know? Bad things. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, furthermore, acts like this contradict the essence of coexistence and peace among <laughs> humans. Oh, oh! I also wanted to go back to um, at first it says to enact a law that prohibits any action or literature that offends prophets. I mean, what? How? How? How broad is that? Any no, action? That's like book burning. I mean, I, I would, I would say more that than 10, that because it's not just literature; it's action. Like, I would if say ten percent of what's in any given library could probably offend some religion, yeah, you know, yeah. or more. Well, when you include the word action, that that seems to me like if you rolled your eyes at some, some <laughs> yeah, street preacher, yeah. that, that's an action. Some and it street, might the street preacher. preacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you don't even so, know his religion, but, you know, he could be one right, of those three but, major But you're rolling religions. his eyes because he's out there yelling and proselytizing and you don't want to hear it. So street you ignore it. Cre- oh, you said street preacher. I thought you said preacher. street creature, like homeless person. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes there's some overlap in the Venn diagram. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So th- they go on to say, labeling these acts as freedom of speech is similar to label- labeling murder as freedom of expression. <laughs> oh, man. That's that's the liberal machismo flash. Right that is. There. <laughs> the status machismo. Although flash. there are, no, I think Republicans feel the same way about Christianity. You know, you I mean? mean, I don't know. Don't you think that um, if Santorum could have, like, thrown people in jail for turning uh, his name into a sex act on the internet, he would have done it. Yeah, yeah. I think he would have. <laughs> That's Gladly, really with a big, with a big yeah. smile on his evil face. A smirk. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so it continues. We all know the chaos such acts can cause, but it's difficult to answer the question. What do they contribute to our nation or humanity in general? And I guess my point there would be even if a comet doesn't <laughs> contribute anything, it would contribute to tyranny and control and, and the degradation of civilization when you try to control what people say. And so everything you know, creates the problem. And the point of the First Amendment, you know, to like, I mean, we're anarchists. We don't believe in needing to write things down, but we're putting this in the context of America has a First Amendment. And this is people petitioning the government through the First Amendment to eliminate a large part of the First Amendment. <laughs> it, it literally it, is, man. It's right, ironic right. beyond ironic. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a self-destructing premise. Because they're using the First Amendment to say it should. Well, exist. you know, they're using they're using guns to take away guns too. Well, so. how about how about this? this? This petition offends the prophets of the fiends religion, and so we're putting a kibosh on it. <laughs> Kibosh. Yep. <laughs> we will put the sins on our um our escape our escape antelope and send it out into the wilderness. <laughs> escape antelope because in Beastlick, Wyoming. Beastlick, yes. Wyoming. I got to add that to the uh the glossary. That's my word for bumfuck Egypt is Beastlick, Wyoming. Yeah. What's the etymology of that? Why uh, beasts? Why lick? I think the first time I said it on the cast, one of my cats was cleaning himself. And uh, I was in and Wyoming. The, and the cats are called the beasts. Yeah. Beast lick okay. Wyoming. Yeah. So <laughs> enough yeah. of this tyranny. Let's move on to other tyranny. So the name of this episode is Anarchists for Romney. <laughs> Just for macho yeah. libertarian flash. To confuse yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. And get page views. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get page views. Yeah, man. Um, I mean, obviously screw them both, but uh, it, it's more obvious that... Uh, that you should say screw them both if Romney wins, I think. Plus, hey, it's somebody new to pick on. I mean, I feel like I've already picked on Obama as much as I want to. It's, it's nice to have a little change of somebody to throw your vitriol at. Yeah. I think his second day in office, he's going to drone you and me, Romney is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, you know, it's, it's weird. Like, Romney is a pro-abortion guy who basically wrote Obamacare, and most Republicans are still voting for him because they're afraid that if they vote for Ron Paul, there'll be pot-crazed married homos shooting up the streets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't get people. I guess it's just because that's what TV tells them. It's because they're not, they're not watching or listening to the Freedom Fiends or looking at the Freedom Fiends blog or any of the other wonderful liberty media out there. They're just stuck to Fox, stuck to MSNBC. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. They're, they're ignorant. They're ignorant. They're not, I, not necessarily stupid, just ignorant. I got to close this tab. I just realized I have a tab open to the White House. I don't like that. I feel like <laughs> I feel like they're in my shit enough already. You know, I don't even like yeah. I'm not going to link that. People can go search it. I don't want to link the White House. I don't want to give them any more Alexa ranking. I don't want I don't want them to get <laughs> the right. fiends the fiends. You don't want to share links with Barack Obama. <laughs> no, man. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess I'll close the tab too. You're right. It does kind of creep you out. I've always found that about all the statist like logos and and websites, they just kind of make me feel dirty to look at. Dirty, yeah. So we need more good media out there that has distribution. That's about the non-aggression principle, and here's why. I searched the term non-aggression principle on Amazon, IMDb, YouTube, and Google. Um, when you search that, my new movie. Gun training with the non-aggression principle is the first thing to come up on Amazon. It's the only thing to come up on IMDb. It's on the first page of YouTube and the second page of Google. So we need more stuff about it. You know, if something that I made in my bedroom that came out a month ago is like at the top of the charts for that term, we need more stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there that explains it or, or points to it, but not necessarily in the title and maybe not even in the description. So, yep. Um, so, yeah, maybe maybe do some. There's no like YouTube exp explanation. There are there. There's a bunch of them, you know, but uh, I don't know. I guess my thing's just blowing up. But literally, we're the only thing on IMDb. It's the only movie that uh, has any kind of distribution. That has that in the title or in the and we're in the description because IMDb searches descriptions too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and even if you go to YouTube and, and search non-aggression principle, the top is a cartoon set that says non-aggression principle. It's got 23,000 views, which is less views than our Guns and Weed trailer. Yeah, and uh, when I added the movie on IMDb, when I, when I put 
non-aggression principle in as a tag, it said, uh, we don't recognize this tag. Do you mean, and had a bunch of things that were nothing, you know, like, like, mm. <laughs> like, you know, aggression or aggressive or whatever. And it's like, you know, no, that's, yeah. it's a new tag, man. Make a new tag. Yeah. Yeah. There's also, uh, if you, uh, search non-aggression principle on YouTube, there's Ayn Rand explains the non-aggression principle to Phil Donahue. That yeah. actually might be interesting. I wouldn't it mind is. I've seen it. it. I've seen yeah. it, although I think there's something about her loving copyright in there. I don't know, but it's good. It's, you know, I mean, that's kind of mind blowing that that was on TV in the 60s or 70s, you know, on real TV, on real yeah. TV. Yeah. Yeah. I bet some people saw that. I bet most people who saw that were like, wow. I'd well, never even Alice Shrugged was a bestseller while she was alive, you know, and they made a movie of one of her other books, uh, Fountainhead. Ah, okay. Okay. And uh Alice Shrug Two is out now in theaters. It is okay. I saw a billboard for it. I didn't know if it was upcoming or if it was already out. Um are you planning on going to see it? I, didn't you see the first one? In yeah, we saw it on D V D uh oh, on DVD. about okay. three weeks after it finished in theaters its one week run or two day run. <laughs> was it really I'm not short? Drive it, to, was, I'm not gonna drive like to that? Denver to see a movie, man. That movie never show in Casper. Really? Huh? You'd think in Casper there would at least be some some enough you know of a market for Ayn Rand fans. I mean, there mm. there are old Republicans who read Ayn Rand and, and maybe incorporated some of the ideas of objectivism. I don't know. Don't I'd think? be curious. I'd be curious if her books are even in the local library. The really? the local library here is run by a consortium of of lefty uh, secular humanist types, from what I can tell. Uh, uh, Boy, I sound yeah. like the, the, I sound the, like, the Casper carpetbaggers. I sound like Rush Limbaugh there, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The public library in my town is. Oh, you don't sound like that. I can't even do him. So I saw yeah, a movie I like, liked. I want to recommend a movie to you. It's Apollo eighteen. <laughs> it's on Are you Netflix. Serious? What's it about? Uh, it's uh, now uh, Apollo about, eighteen. Well. America only had up to Apollo 17. Apollo ah. 18 was uh, cut for funding. This movie ah. is, it's kind of like Blair Witch Project on the moon. Ah, And it cool. shares a lot in common with the movie Moon. Oh, I love that movie. doesn't have yeah. the libertarian themes, and it's more of a horror movie. But it's basically uh, Apollo 8, you know, it's supposed to be found footage, you know, like shot by cameras on... For a failed mission? For Well... It was a secret mission in this uh, world, uh, you know, in about 1970 something. And, you know, they sent three guys up to the moon and it was secret because they were supposed to be placing like a spy radio transmitter on the moon. And they go up uh, there and like they find a dead cosmonaut who's been beat to death. OK, that's where it starts. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say. And they're like, they don't even know, like the cosmonaut mission was secret you know like like they don't know about that one and they find this yeah, guy he's like yeah and then hilarity ensues no it doesn't it gets really kind of scary but i like it a lot it's <laughs> With hilarious that. results yeah. yeah 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 okay yeah that does sound awesome I'd, I'd definitely be into checking that out i i love i guess that's one of the things i loved about moon is is science fiction where where there's so much solitude like you can't call the cops for help, yeah. right? If you're yeah. on the moon, yeah, <laughs> you're you're alone unless you yourself and your buddy, whoever's there with you, or if you have nobody with you, your own brain has to figure out a way to keep you alive. There's exactly. no other it's, help. It's, that's what this has in common with Moon. Although there's yeah. three guys up there, but you know, pretty soon there ain't three but, guys but, up yeah, there. In Moon, two of the guys are the same guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the other thing is, yeah. I mean, this one, this one doesn't like stretch normal reality as much as Moon, but it gets a lot darker, even if that's possible. Ah, uh, ooh, okay. And it's really well done. I mean, the stuff, everything in it, pretty much like looks like 1970s NASA footage. You know, like like uh, yeah. kind of low res, grainy. You know, but not all of it. But and there were a couple things that like I had problem with suspension of disbelief with like uh, and this is not a what's the deal breaker called? Not a spoiler. It's, it's not a spoiler. I was called a deal breaker. <laughs> deal um, breaker. Ladies, that's a deal. breaker. <laughs> You've been watching too much 30. Right? I have been. I started watching them all over again. So uh, <laughs> after I finished the new season. So uh. um, yeah, there's like there's a couple like everything is shot from point of view of like either one of the three cameras on the limb one of the two cameras on the orbiter or like the handheld cameras that they're walking around the moon with. Uh, I kind of like the, that concept. I like that as a I do. As and a it's done really concept. well. I mean, that's how it's like Blair Witch and it's supposed to be, yeah. this is supposed to be put together from found footage. But um, there's actually one or two shots that I'm going like, I just immediately went like, that's impossible, you know, because there's one that's like, 
looks like it's shot from about a two-story building looking down on the limb. And I'm like, no, there's no camera there. There's no camera there. Can't be, you know. But it was really quick, and it just it, went. It by. couldn't have been some kind of secret space satellite orbiting the moon instead of Earth. That had no, nah, it zoom didn't. Function. It didn't. It didn't move, and they didn't have that kind of zoom function then. You know. Yeah. Okay. So speaking okay. of the space program, that guy, the Red Bull guy, they jumped. Did Did you hear about this? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, man. I was excited about. Explain it. it. I, was I was too. Like, I was, go 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 go. Yeah, guy. Explain what happened. What's his name? Felix. I don't know how to pronounce it. Bumgardner. I always laugh at that name. Uh, yeah, something like that. He's ba- Baum- Austrian Gardner. or German or something. Yeah, Felix yeah. Ba- Baumgartner. Okay, okay. I would say Baumgartner. So um, I, I think maybe we talked about the precursor to this on the cast, did we? There was some guy uh, who was in the Air Force decades ago, maybe the 50s or 60s. Yeah, uh, did a free er- fall early from space. Sp- yeah, yeah, early space program stuff. I think it was like 60,000 feet up or maybe par- 80,000. Parachute jump. That. Yeah, yeah, and it, and there is actual video of that one too, which is was, is really awesome. He this guy basically j- <laughs> takes a this balloon guy, up. Go ahead, go ahead. This guy jumped from like thirty nine kilometers. Yeah, yeah, from a helium balloon, and there's footage of him jumping out on it. It's just breathtaking, and it's high high def, and it's like the whole thing was sponsored by Red Bull. And there's a picture going around the internet of him doing that, you know, stepping out of the balloon capsule. And it says that awkward moment when you realize an energy drink has a better space program than your nation, <laughs> which I actually believe was made by statists saying NASA needs to step up yes. its game. But Still more money. libertarians and anarcho capitalists are sharing this with glee. And one comment someone said, It's not that awkward moment, it's that awesome moment. Ah wonderful. Yeah, yeah. it is and that's how I felt about it too. Um I love that. I, I just I, I, I watched the video and it, it's, it is amazing. Um, like I said, it had been done before, but not from as up high, but the same concept. Well, he broke three records. He broke three records in this, like longest free fall, longest parachute jump and something else. I forget, but oh, he longer, broke, he broke the speed, speed barrier. Yeah. yeah he yeah. was going like 700 miles <laughs> an hour. Yeah. Because, uh, when there's less oxygen, I believe, uh, terminal well, velocity is no thick- higher. Yeah. Well, because there's there's a lack of friction, right? If there's no yeah, air to push yeah. against you as you're falling. Yep. Um, there was another really cool independent thing today. It was like a, no, a new planet was discovered by like amateurs this week. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. yeah. And you know, they always name it. There was after also, you. Did, did you hear about that a couple of years ago? This isn't anything new that, you know, private people and just hobbyists can get to space uh, so cheaper than NASA did. There were some kids that uh, floated. Uh, I think they were kids like teenagers, like late teens or something like that floated a camera a digital camera up into into space pretty much into the lower atmosphere and took pictures of the earth from you know the, the low upper earth atmosphere orbit. lower space yeah yeah and um you know sent it back to themselves and you know they got they got photos like satellite quality of the earth uh photos that would have cost nasa you know millions of dollars to get yeah and it's like the whole nasa space program now is just directed it was always directed at warfare but now it's directed at warfare against us, I believe. You know, I think that the drones are the drones well, I kinda, are obvious. I kind of feel like the warfare is always against us, right? It's, it seems to be always against the populace. In it's, the sense open that it, it, it's open now. It's open. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it may be more open now. When I was a kid, you know, when a man first walked on the moon, it was like, we got to do this or the Russians will do it. You know, it wasn't, mm-hmm. we got to do this so we can spy on all of you and be able to kill you, which is what they, it they, is now. They, pit, they pitched it nationalistically and defensively like hey right, we gotta do this right. uh whereas now it's uh we must you know <laughs> we must make sure there are no terrorists among us yeah and you know yeah. the they're expanding the definition of what a terrorist is basically to like you know it's headed towards like anybody who criticizes one of the major religions <laughs> right, right or or the president yeah. Anyone, who, anyone yeah. who criticizes the president. That, really, that's the other thing. To me, to me, the most major religion, uh, the most statism. horrible religion is statism. Yeah. Yeah. And so if, if you include that in the definition of that petition, then we're all screwed. Yep. So uh, let's go sell some things. Okay. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! 
You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says buttons. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. So, Nima... Yo, you know how I was talking. I was talking about uh, my former publisher Thompson, who is the parent company that put out the thirty dollars film school, thirty dollars writing school, thirty dollars uh, music school books. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they play both sides of the street. Like we were talking about how like I don't like them anymore because they make software for cops to comb social media sites looking for criminal activity. Um, mm. Yeah. I also found out from someone I know who works in a law firm that uh, they also write books about search and seizure procedures written by criminal, written for criminal lawyers defending against the cops. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, it, it's both sides of the fence in a sense, but it's also, you know, both promotes the system um, because even that's working within the system, isn't it? Yeah. Which, you know, uh, I'm not. That guy not, who does we're that. We're not against. But. I'm not that guy who does that podcast. And if I'm ever arrested with criminal charges, I am going to hire a good criminal attorney, and I yeah. will hope he has read these books. But uh, yeah, it just seems kind of weird, you know. I mean, it's kind of like. Well, Mr. they're they're a company, and they got to make money, man. You know, it's like Mr. No- Mr. Burns says. You know, you and I are like peas in a pod. We both made shells for the Nazis, but mine worked. Damn it. <laughs> Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, it's not like people who buy the one book are going to like look at the Thompson logo and be like, oh, Thompson, I love those guys, and then see the other one and be like, oh, I'm so disillusioned. <laughs> I mean, they'll probably yeah. never see the book, and probably nobody ever looks at the little logo that says Thompson. Yeah, and both sides of it would say, hey, you know, I, I'd i like to have agendas, but i got to take care of my family. got to feed my family, man. I'm yeah, watching. the other di- the other day I was thinking of a blog post like, what, what what's so funny? Uh, I just watched two squirrels. They're fighting like death brawl in a tree, and they both fell twenty feet. Squirrel fight, and then like jumped and ran up the tree and started fighting again. <laughs> I see squirrels do that. Uh, I was walking through the park like the week before my wedding when I went back to to Texas for the first time in like a year, and uh, it was early in the morning, and there were like thirty squirrels all jumping like throughout the trees and having their little <laughs> squirrel society, and like there was like a, I think it was a boyfriend and a girlfriend or two boy squirrels were fighting over a girl squirrel, and they were like chasing each other through the trees, and like one would knock the other Aww. off the tree, and it was it was fun to watch. They make noises too, like they talk, they, they do like. Yeah, no. they like talk to each other. I'd, I'd never seen that. Yeah. Before. Well, I can't hear them today because the wind is like gusting at 50 and 60 miles an hour. That's what actually woke me up today. Our house is pretty yeah. well soundproof, but the wind woke me up. Yeah. It's that time of year again. And I think what the squirrels are fighting about, I've never seen them like this violent. We were feeding them peanuts, like piles of peanuts forever, like all mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. And we ran out. I mean, we'll go, we'll go to Menards, you know, in a week or two, but we just went there and we forgot to get peanuts. So, they're out of peanuts, and I've seen them burying peanuts. So I think that, you know, this is kind of like the socialists when the food stamps run out. They're rioting a little bit, you know. <laughs> when the food stamp. Yeah, yeah. You were the state for those squirrels. Yeah. Uh, not really. I mean, I guess you were donating the, the peanuts. Yeah. You didn't steal the peanuts first. Yeah. But, you know, and actually, like, the day the peanuts ran out, like, the, a couple squirrels would just be sitting on our windowsill where the peanuts usually were, like, staring at us, like, standing up on their haunches, like, begging, what, begging, what the fuck, motherfucker? For their dinner. Yeah. No, no, like, they looked aggressive. No? They would, <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, um, Obama's going to pay my rent. He bought me a cell phone. He bought me, bought me a cell phone. Have you seen the... Uh, the video that some Tea Party movement made, TV vid- TV where, where, where she's talking about the cell phone and how she got the, the phone from Obama. It's, he, it's, ga- he gave me phone. They just found, like, the most subliterate person with the worst sounding voice they could and just played it over and over. Like, yeah. Obama gonna buy me a phone! Obama yeah. gave me a phone! Yeah, I think Adam Curry was, was in 
Dvorak were saying it or thinking it was fake or something, you know, like maybe it was an actor. Or somebody it looks like it could be, but you know, yeah. you do enough man on the even even interviews. if it is an actor, yeah. A, a you do enough man on street interviews, and even if it was an actor, they get the same point across. Yeah, same thing. There probably is somebody out there that that feels that way. <laughs> oh, there are. I've seen I've seen stuff. I've seen people saying on the interwebs, you know. If if Romney gets elected and my food stamps get cut off, I'm going to the streets and there's going to be blood. Which you know, we running up in if houses. It, if a conservative or libertarian said anything like that, the FBI would be at their door. Yeah, I'd be yeah. running up in houses. That was one of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So screw that man. That's square. That's square. Well, what I was going to say earlier about feeding the family, uh, I you know, and uh, the publisher having to do what what's best. Um, I was thinking of a blog post the other day while I was at work uh, delivering pizzas and. I was like, you know, the thing about cops, man, is what if we just stopped, you know, what if everybody had stopped accepting cop money since it's blood money, basically? Just, you know, they come to your store like, sorry, I, I can't take your cop money. Well, we saw uh, but, that. But then the, the next delivery was, uh, we did see that, that one little coffee shop, the little liberal uh, lefty anarchist, anarchist in, lefty uh, anarchist. in Oregon. And that was, that was really cool. Um, but my next run was to the jail, which was horrible to deliver to. It was, it was like... Kafka esque and, and the thing, things I had to go to through that giant building to deliver the damn pizzas. Can the inmates, uh, I mean the clients, order uh, pizza? No, no, of course, <laughs> no, of course not. No. The this was this was central booking. Um, but yeah, I, I had to I had to go to like the actual. <clears throat> I don't even know what they call their different rooms, but I had to go run room and they were like, um, yeah, that's not this department. Let me call. Uh, they're like, oh, you got to go to this, this giant green door on the side, the corner of the, the dark street and ring a bell and ask. And I did that and they were like, oh, this is not it. And it was like really imposing. Like the door was literally like 20, 30 feet tall. It was like the, <laughs> the main door of the thing. And it was green. It's like the door uh, to Mordor. Yeah, it really was. It really, and this, the rest of the buildings, you know, stone and imposing and, and very brutalist, brutalist uh, architecture. architecture. Yeah, and they were like, "No, you must go to the corner, corner, corner." And so I went <laughs> to the corner, and I finally found the guy. And uh, you know, he takes the pizza. I, it was a huge order, um, and and gives me a, a fat tip. And I was like, "Yeah, cool." <laughs> I put it in my pocket. I said, "You have a nice day." I know it's stolen money, and it's you know bad, but hey, I need the money too, man. I need the money too. Got to feed your family. Uh, you gotta some feed DJ, my family. a DJ mixer, a DJ mixer. Yeah, yeah. I got to feed my hands a nice new crossfader and some vinyl platters. Well, the problem is uh, people are so brainwashed that if, you know, some percentage stop accepting cops business, somebody else would just make more. I mean, it kind of reminds me of like, right. It would, this, it would do it. This isn't the statist version of it. But when I was a bike messenger in like 86, 87, uh, you know, I realized how important bike messengers were to the financial district of San Francisco. They really aren't So you, now. you were like a courier, like yeah. if something needs to be delivered in, in the next few hours physically. In the next th few that would minutes. Be in the next few minutes. Few often. minutes. Yeah, right, I, mean, right. I mean like... It's really important <clears throat> shit, like business, like high yeah, level like, shit. Like right? if you stopped off for a cigarette, like, you know, somebody could lose their business because you're doing shit yeah. like, you know, you have to get this filing to city hall for this court case to go through, you know, by 5 PM, including right, standing right. in line or somebody, and, you know, go, uh, somebody's in contempt of court. If you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Shit like that all the time. Yeah. And, uh, I was thinking about that and I was thinking about how like, you know, they're, they're not paid very well. I mean, it's better than minimum wage by far, but you're also risking your life and there was like no insurance, no benefits. See, why, why is there no tipping? I feel like couriers should get tipped. That, there should, that should yeah. be some kind of social norm. Uh, uh, that was not allowed as a bike messenger with most companies oh, really? because, because then, um, you know, because but the people were paying. It incentivizes it. it. It would make you go faster. Well, it would here's, make you more. Here's their thing was like, uh, if that was the case, the companies felt people would stand around like waiting with their hand out and kind of intimidate their clients and they'd lose clients to other people. And it was industry standard. Mm -hmm. However, sometimes people did tip us, uh, you yeah, know, like probably right. one delivery out of 30, but, uh. and it was never to a company. It was always, it was to a home and they probably didn't know that there was a rule, you know? Uh, right, right. Um, that, that's the standard at a home. If somebody comes to your door and yeah, gives you something yeah. you were expecting. Yeah. I guess unless it's the post office who are already stealing the money or from UPS anyway. who are already have to charge so much more <laughs> well, because of, because yeah. of the post office. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, but I was thinking one day, like you know, we should go on strike, man. We'll shut down the financial district, and uh, you know, I mean, but like back then, like there wasn't even the internet. It was like if you wanted to, you know, there was computer files. We carried them on discs, on zip drives, which were not what they are now. They were something like 
the size of a ah, floppy disk and like uh-huh. a half inch I remember, thick. I remember those. You know, and they held a yeah. hundred meg. Hard, and cost like hard like, plastic. Yeah, and they cost like forty yeah. bucks each. So, yeah. you know, we'd carry they, like they only arch- held a hundred megs. Yep, and That's they cost so like crazy. forty bucks each. So we, I mean, we carry like <laughs> architectural files and blueprints on those. So, uh-huh, but uh-huh. I wanted to go on strike, and my dispatcher. Uh, you know, who is also my really good friend, Bo. I've talked about him before. He's now a Wall Street attorney. Um, Bo was like, if you go on strike, not everyone's going to do it. And it's just going to be everyone else is going to be like, ah, more gravy for us. Gravy is like yep. high paying tags that don't take long to do that are on a rush. So, right. you know, right. and he ended up calling me a cause without a rebel, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Yeah. 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 You're right, man. I mean, if. If one person doesn't take the money that other the other people are offering for a service, somebody else will step in. Yeah, know? and that's it's the like free market. If, there, if that's, there's food to be found, people will find. That it. was pretty much the free market in action. But it is. It, yeah. it would be a similar mechanism or a similar result if people stopped giving money to cops. But it wouldn't really be the free market because it's stolen money. But you know, a free market of people who don't recognize the stolen money would just take over and say, "I'll take your business." If pe- if people stop letting their money get stolen by the people who then use that stolen money and distribute it to the cops, yeah, and I think that anybody who would do that is very brave because you know I think some people probably put a brick through your window for you know cops or friends of cops would probably put a brick through your window for not uh, not taking cops' money. Yeah, oh, there'd definitely be some horizontal you know, union going union on there. thuggery type thought mm-hmm. you know like the guy who the guy who wanted to hunt me down and eat my face was a union member you know <laughs> right right well and you'd, you'd have neighbors and busybodies and people in the community who knew you and, and would just think oh you want everybody to murder each other and die because you want our cops to leave <laughs> yeah it's like no no, no I, we, I don't we i don't want, want cops murdering me and stealing we want my money. peace that's why we want the cops to leave and you know yeah i i have a statement to make that's kind of macho to libertarian flash but kind of i think might have some basis that uh you know could probably get my face eaten <laughs> I really think that people yeah. who need a gang behind them, you know, a union or the government or both are pussies to, to yeah. I mean they really are. I mean I think that they're like yeah. you know, people generally, you know, people with families are often overwhelmed by the pressure. It's understandable, you know, you got a kid looking up at you with like your god cuz that's how kids look at their parents when they're really young going like yeah, I'm hungry daddy. You know, it's like uh-huh. Uh-huh. you're like you you feel like you're less of a man if you can't feel that kid feed that kid and you know it's like I kind of think I'm more of a man than those people because I can I can support myself and partially support my wife and we we get by and help her kids out occasionally when they need it uh you know without her, having, her kids are grown though I yeah mean, or yeah. you know I'm not saying we don't send them money every week I'm saying like you know if their car breaks down and they have to get right, to work right, we'll give right. them a hundred bucks or something but uh yeah. You know, we take care of our our families without a gang behind us. So I think that uh, mm-hmm. you know, I think it's less manly to need the gang behind you. Oh, I agree completely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's also less manly to to think that you do need the gang, or else you know, you, you basically, it's basically saying I can't take care of myself, right? I I need this gang of people. To- so should should we call this episode "Union Members Are Pussy Faggot Impotent Bastards"? <laughs> Think uh, get some but traffic. it's more it's it's more than just the union members man i mean the whole oh state's i know game, i know right? yeah uh you know ben quaker maybe, rec- uh, we, we need a bigger tent for our beef on that one <laughs> yeah uh yeah i mean just tax eaters status collectivists yeah collectivists. which i'm th- i'm thinking that, of them collectively though get. i'm i'm thinking them collectively and lumping them all together yourself it's a self-destructing logic there yeah yeah <laughs> roads roads Status. We should call them road scholars. <laughs> wow, that's great. That's great. I love it. Uh, coin that. I guess you've already coined it, but put it in the glossary and definitely bring it up again and again and again. Yeah, I think but I'll spell it. On. I'll spell it. Roads like the thing you drive on, not oh yeah, oh like yeah, the scholarship. Well, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. But, but people will get it. People will get it. I hope. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's too highbrow, but well, I, I love it. Let's run it up the flagpole. I'll post it on uh, Facebook right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. See how it goes. So there's a new website. Um, type this in. It's somebody who loves us, and I've never heard of them, and they have a really good blog, and they had they made ads for guns and weed that say guns and weed become a freedom theme, and put them on here. Really, look really cool. Yeah. Type in. Cool. T e o d e s i a n dot net. It's uh, Tango, T- Echo, Oscar, Delta, Echo. Sierra, India, Alpha, uh, what's in, what's in, uh, November.net. Hey, uh-huh. I did it. I'm getting better at that. I realized that what I was doing wrong with. 
you got you got it in rhythm, but the BPM was was pretty low. It was pretty it. low, but, 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 but you job. know that's how you do. That's how you become a good musician playing with a metronome. You know, you You're do. Right. You, you play the song start at sixty BPM and slowly as work slow your way as up. you can without making a mistake, and then you work up. And I'm working on it. <clears throat> I really do want to learn the alphanumeric NATO alphabet. Alpha phonetic alphabet because it's really useful with a lot of things like tech support and giving out URLs and interwebs. Um, yeah. And I was doing it wrong. I was doing it like I could go through and say, you know, Alpha Bravo, Charlie Delta, Echo Fox, Rock Golf, etc. But I, but I had to think to spell words out. And it's easier to practice doing that if you're looking at a word, at least for me, than uh, than just doing it from your head. But I'm gonna get to where mm -hmm. I can do it from my head. I was yeah, looking yeah. at the word when I did it too. I'm not. See, I do it from my it. head and I do it fast, but I make the um, the words. You make up your own up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, like, you said that's lame, but I think it can be funny. Especially, you can make the words well, you know re related to your tech I, purpose. Call. I used to do that before with tech calls, and it's better than not using anything. But yeah. Uh, a lot of people, it, especially, it, it, it throw people off that might not be native English speakers because yeah. they might not know the when you the say local Nima it, for N and Fiend for F. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although yeah. the Indian, the Indians would probably get Nima. Get Nima, but the Indians <laughs> all know this with particular words, and uh, they do, know. they do. When I was working in a, a tech support call center, yeah, the outsourcers would always use the NATO alphabet, uh, and it was helpful. In Muslim countries, they use Wilco instead of whiskey for W because they don't want to say whiskey. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I guess Indians aren't Muslim, but the Indians that I would talk to would always still say whiskey. Uh, whiskey. And they would say things like whiskey tango, and I'd be like, oh, that sounds delicious. Whiskey tango? Would you like to do the whiskey tango with me? <laughs> I would. I would. Whiskey I would like tango. To drink some whiskey tango. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whiskey tango uh, foxtrot is what the fuck. People use that a lot. Ah, <laughs> nice, nice. There's actually oh, so a bar in Brooklyn called whiskey tango foxtrot. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. I'm, I'm on a toad. Todesian.net, yeah. which is the I guess the English way to say it. Oh, it says Molon Labe in green under yeah. That's hit the refresh, subtitle. hit refresh a few times and look at the ads over on the right. A guns and weed one will come up after three or four. Uh, but uh, they list us if you look at those little images of like stuff they recommend on the front page. Ah, do you like guns and weed? Become a freedom yeah. fiend. How oh, awesome! Oh, I yeah. I like their guns and weed logo, man. I we really do. Go up that. I know. It's it's a it's a mini gun, which I know. Is a it's a mini gun barrel and, Gatlin and, uh, gun. and what's the other thing, man? It looks like a spear gun. I don't know. It looks like a rail gun, maybe. Like it shoots yeah. an electrical laser yeah. at you. <laughs> there you go. I, I don't know, man. It's I pretty like, awesome. I man. like this site. It's got some good blog posts on it. I'll link it. Yeah. And uh, and it's got I'll, links to the fiends. I'll, uh, yeah. Go ahead. It, the first video is, is the Felix Baumgartner, uh, and at the bottom it says our new favorite Austrian. Is he is he like from Austria? He's from like Austria. That kind of that's the that's, joke. That's yeah. really cool. That's really yeah. cool. So so he's uh, part of the Austrian school of space. Austrian yes. space school instead of the school <laughs> yes. of economics. That's cool, man. Cool. Go for go, Felix. Go, Felix, man. That that's that's a freedom fix, and he's a freedom hero. Yes. yes. Road scholar, a statist. My uh, my Oof. my brother-in-law was like, "Does it prove any like scientific points?" And I guess I was like, "Well, it proves that if you were in a low Earth orbit space station in the future, you could don a suit and escape by just jumping out, <laughs> escape the state, <laughs> escape." Yeah, there you go. If the the state tries to take over your libertarian uh orbiting space station. <laughs> maybe that's a frontier you know i guess it is i mean it's obviously a frontier, orbit but, we're but gonna maybe, build lib liparian orbit liparian orbit yeah yeah why, why, why go all the way to the moon when you can just go you just take balloons up you know you don't even need an expensive uh setup you know to to leave earth orbit just just take a balloon <laughs> well isn't the there that, that free speech platform at uc berkeley that's like two feet above the ground and the theory is that you're not on any earth yeah, you know. yeah. Why not? Why not take that a little bit further and go, you know, miles and miles above ground? Well, for one thing, it's really fucking cold, miles and miles above ground. I'm in Wyoming, it and it feels it like I'm above ground. I mean, we got like 60 mile an hour gusts. It is. Let it me is, open the it's, window. It's, pro it's probably warmer than the moon, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I, guess, I guess the reason, and maybe this is also why the government loves to get into space so much, is is the United States government pretty much owns they they their monopoly of violence extends to space and not well. That's space why they wanted above to plant, America. That's why they space above the Earth. They had to get there and plant a flag first. Can you hear this wind? Exactly. That was wind. Yeah. Well, I thought it was like an air compressor, man. That was loud. No. Did you just listen. crack your window just, and that's just, what you hear? Yeah, just listen. 
Jeez. Oh, I miss it. I remember that wind. I remember. Yeah, that. this time of year it starts a lot like that. Yeah, I remember hearing that. It's it's not as windy in Texas. I had forgotten that. I was so used to living in really windy places. You know, Riverton was really windy. Casper is way windier than Riverton, and uh, in in Washington it was also really really windy. Like on on pretty much every day you guys have some kind of wind, and on once or twice a week it's just like blowing you away like there's the, when i first got to wyoming in the news station uh there was a little poster on one of the secretary's desks that said wyoming windsock and it was like a big sailing chain yeah. tied to a pole and like blowing in the wind yeah and it, uh, and it said like you know i think we used that for an episode didn't we oh did we maybe yeah. maybe if we didn't we should but um yeah man here in austin though it's in texas in general it, it's just kind of nice and you know the it, the, instead of windy, we we get the humid. We get the humidity. Like if that's that's the worst thing when you go outside and you're just sticky with sweat. But I guess I'll take that over wind any day because at least I can talk on the phone and not have it sound like. Yeah. Okay. I added Beast Lick Wyoming and Road Scholar to the Fiends Glossary. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, God, listen to that wind, man. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. And I'm surprised. I'm surprised it sounds so soothing and good on the microphone. How far is it away? You're using the ribbon mic, right? Yeah. So it's it, both sides. You know, it's omnidirectional or bidirectional. Uh, so it was. It's pointing at me, but it's also pointing away from me at the window. Right. So right. it was actually that was some pretty good wind recording right there. It was really good. Yeah. Uh, open it back up and say something epic while it's blowing. Uh, with the rhythm. Nah, of it's hard to reach around my <laughs> monitor and do that. It actually strains okay. my shoulders. It's at a really weird angle. Ah, uh, uh, okay. I'm not willing to do that for you, Nima. I'm okay. sorry, Nima. I can't do that. Well, I'll just get a petition, and then since <laughs> enough people signed it, uh, you'll be socially government contracted to do it. guns to make me do it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Beast Lick, Wyoming. <laughs> the Fiends version of Bumfuck Egypt. <laughs> with more, more road scholars per capita than anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let's take a little break here and come back. Break? And finish no, up. no. We can say break on our own cast, man. It's not live. Oh, people are liking the. Uh, people are really. Uh, but it plays on the uh, on the radio. Oh, uh, you're right. You're right. People All are right. really liking Road Scholar. Okay, we'll be right back. All right. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network. A collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is okay. People are loving Road Scholar on the interwebs here, Nima. Good man. I mean, I loved it. It was like it clicked immediately. It's very memeish. Meme- it's also memified. it's also really good. Of, uh, I like I like ways to insult idiots where they don't realize you insulted them until they walk away from the conversation, <laughs> and then they're like, "Shut up, Becky. <laughs> You're in trouble when I get to a dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> You're in trouble to- when I get to the fiends glossary." <laughs> Uh, it, like, is you're in trouble when I get to the dictionary? Is that a reference to something, or is that uh, yeah, it is. The original? It's, you know, it's it's from Simpsons or something. And you uh, know, okay. like idiot statists who uh, who went to college will probably like call you an idiot and correct you because you spelled Rhodes wrong in their mind. Oh, they will. Yeah, they will. Like that's not even how you spell Rhodes Scholar. It'll just go over yeah. their heads. Yeah, it'll be so far above their heads that they'll need a stewardess. <laughs> saw, saw that uh, as a comment on Facebook the other day. I thought it was kind of clever. Yeah. The only thing I like about Facebook is the immediate feedback. Uh, there's not another web presence. That, that's what's so good about it. Like yeah, the only that's thing. I like. Like, that's the only that's thing what makes it, it amazing. Yeah. It's like yeah. I posted this. We took a four minute bathroom break and I came back and there's already like 10 comments on it and eight likes. You know, I also think it's the best way in the world that the world has conceived of yet for networking. I mean, there's stuff that is more specific to that, like LinkedIn, but you got to pay for it. It's not the best way of networking, but it's the most immediate probably way of networking. Although 
A lot of people have success it's, with it's Twitter. The it's the path of least resistance, I think, for networking. It's, yeah. it's the easiest way to get the most bang for your, yeah. your non-existent bucks. It's like this, bucks this it's wonderful free. free thing that the government reads everything you do and throws you in a cage <laughs> for it. They're going to do that anyway, though, man. I mean, I know it's you can encrypt yourself, and you should, um, but anything you do in public, they, they can watch. They can find out what it is, you know, your cell phone calls. Uh, if you live in a major city, your driving habits and your walking. They're to putting and from cameras place on cop cars now that are, like, pointed out. Like in every direction? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, see, I guess the status, what they would really want to do if I were them is is – have the cop cars be recording constantly into a server, you know, off site. So yeah. they, they find out literally that those are their eyes. Like they use those as eyes on the street 24 well, seven. They're going to replace the cops with drones. Eventually Robocops, you know, they are, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. And then like all the cops take, take the human element out of it. And then we don't have to question, well, will our cops fire on citizens? Will our cops uh, murder people in cold blood? If the state tells them to, I mean, in, in, in a sense they already do, you know, that's Ben Stone was saying, that's basically what your job is. If you're a part of a SWAT team yeah, or we'll the, yeah. the evil wrath of the state. And you don't care if, if this person has the wrong address, or you don't care if this person is is you know a political prisoner or, or somebody who's being attacked because they morally believe something and they didn't hurt anybody. You don't care. Your job at that point is is just to kill. You're you're as dumb as a bullet. I think Ben said. Yeah. So, but uh, you know there there are people that have conscious. Uh, maybe they don't join the SWAT team. Maybe they're a patrol officer or a peace officer. Um, and you know, it's, I guess it's almost a fine line between a drone in the sense is if you're a functionary for the state and you're a cop and you do whatever you're told anyway, and you just do your job, you're kind of a drone in a sense, I think. But, uh, if the state could take that whole human element out of it, take the whole human conscious out of it, uh, I think they would in a second. And they're probably trying to do that. Well, the army, you know, Boston said 15 years ago, the army wants everything to be smart weapons so they can have, uh, you know brutal killers at a mile away who and, and disarm slaves when yeah, they go home from work right right yeah yeah they want them to be able to go back to selling shoes and not still being able to shoot a guy at a half mile with a deer rifle you know right right oh they would love that they would love that well that's what um, drones are man i mean you know and they've actually well, well, made drones aren't autonomous yet I, I think they're they're pushing in that direction yeah but, but still it disarms the uh the operator because the operator doesn't right. have the system he goes back you yeah, know he goes home he, he goes home yeah yeah but it theoretically if he wanted to the operator could turn the drone around and fly it over <laughs> he could frag somebody i mean i guess th that's why they like to have them so far removed from the the field of battle you know they, they probably don't know the people i bet that there are well i'll bet they could do that but i'll bet they couldn't turn around and hit a target in the u.s or hit a u.s target you know well, I it's, think it's too far I don't, think, I don't think the technology well is, you know is, i don't think they could hit the army base in the country where they're killing the terrorist mm. not that we really want them it, not that we want them to, and we're not even suggesting anything like that. But we're saying militarily, I'm not. I'm not sure it's a foregone conclusion that they would build that in. Like, it, it seems like they would. They have might have to, to have a reason to do that. Maybe, maybe. Well, the thing is, what if the well, enemy takes over thing, your base? What if the enemy takes over your base and you need the drone to attack? Yeah, the target I mean, that's already I, inside the base. I, I kind of think that would be so. I'm guessing that would be a fail safe through the password protected that. A different guy had the access codes to you know a supervisor yeah a nuclear that. football right. kind of option where like right. two guys holding revolvers at each other have to turn the key <laughs> yeah yeah they could do something like that yeah yeah and i guess they, they might but you know eventually the way things are going eventually that's going to be automated and you know automated mm -hmm. is hackable too yeah yeah that's although thing to bring up. although all these computers i guarantee they are not connected to the internet but they are connected to intranets which are hackable yeah, yeah, the whole thing's terrifying, man. I real I don't, I don't even like thinking about it. <laughs> I don't I don't like thinking about kill bots over my head that could be programmed by a person to kill me or could fail and kill me. You know. Yeah. Did you see that thing? Uh, speaking of of future technology, uh, a fiend sent us a thing. It was a website, and I think really it's it's to a movie. Um, but it was like a trailer to a movie, and what the concept is is it's in the future, and people enhance themselves, you know, like uh, robotic eyes, robotic arms, uh, stuff like that. But it it's not like it doesn't seem cliched. It's very fresh feeling, and um, part of the concept is is that you know you got to give the corporation access to it in case they need to do maintenance or whatever. 
the case is. So then the corporation can shut you down if you're not in compliance with the state or the corporation. No, so I didn't they can see shut that. Down your arm you know, or your eye. You know why I didn't see that? Why? Because it wasn't submitted to the proper page on the Freedom <laughs> this Feed This was site. before that, though. This was like a okay. couple weeks ago. This was a couple weeks ago. No, I didn't see it because I got like seven different people sent it to me, and I was overwhelmed by it and uh, didn't see it. Okay. It, it okay. probably led me to this new thing. And what is the problem that people have with, please put things in this box instead of throwing them on my floor, you know? Oh, he's just the one guy, man. I don't know if you could say people have a problem with that. Uh, well, but yeah, that, 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 I, I, I'm a collectivist, then, if I'm saying that. People. <laughs> Damn people. Yeah, Foolish yeah, exactly. humans. It, it, it was just the one guy, and maybe he was having a bad week or something, man. Um, I'll but, never know, because he's blocked, man. <laughs> well... He's yeah. not blocked, actually. I didn't. I I haven't figured out a way yet to block um, talk back, and I didn't want to have him blocked for me and have you getting copies of it. You so. can block. Uh, just mark it as spam. Well, then it'd all be spam. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. Um, hmm. No, I'll figure it out. Okay. Okay. When we get a real, real, uh, someone worth blocking, I'll figure it out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, we haven't got a whole lot of. <laughs> Uh, hate mail. We, you know, I'm kind of surprised. I mean, I'm kind of. I kind of wish we had some callers that we could argue with us on the call-in shows. I really do too. I really do too. Um, arguing with status is a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Sometimes, if you're in the mood for it, and I think it's uh, informative to other people. Like, I, I love it when other <laughs> podcasters post debates of themselves debating status, uh, or or war mongers. You know, Scott Horton played a thing of. Some clip of him at some conference where he was debating some warmonger about Iraq, and it was it was just great to hear somebody come out and spit the status talking points, and then have you know a good on point anarchist just rip them to shreds. There's something very satisfying about that. Yeah, I like watching it. I don't like doing it. I'm not that good at it. I just say, "Well, foo." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. Uh, well, hopefully, Will Coley gets to uh, do that. To yeah. this this Berkman. Yeah, guy. we set up we set up duels and then have our proxy take them, <laughs> which isn't how it's supposed to work. Only the person who accepts the duel is supposed to be able to do that. But yeah, Rollins never wrote me back. By the way, well, what what I did with this duel is I told Will Coley, and he was like, "Yeah, I'll yeah, do it." Yeah. And then Will Coley called him out, and we didn't hear back from the guy. So I called him out. We didn't hear back from the guy. Now you're calling him out. I'm going to call him on the phone at his law firm today and be polite and ask if he wants to do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just feel it's very disingenuous if you post a video <laughs> saying I will I will, I will anyone, debate anybody anytime. Right, oh, right. And then and then the first comment on that video is, Okay, let's debate and you ignore it. I think that's very disingenuous. Well, I mean that's a comment on a YouTube video and people that are busy don't dude, have time to check dude. every YouTube video comment. But but, but when it when it's when it's fresh and new, if you just post something, are you telling me you, you won't want to see the feedback the next day? I feel like everybody who just posts something on YouTube, they're gonna at least go back and look at well, it once. That right guy after was pretty posted. hard to get contact info for, which leads me to think he wants to say what he wants to the world and not hear what it says back. I completely I be I, I believe that a hundred percent, but then it's very disingenuous to to say in your video that you'll debate anybody. And I I'm kind of like that too. I'm kind of one way communication to an extent. You know, no, I, I, no, man. You, you, you listen to e every comment, every piece of feedback you get. You generally respond to, and like, I was very yeah, good about that. Okay, I feel like I'm not just because somebody fucking said I was a book burner today, and because like I'm feeling overwhelmed even by the favorable people doing that, the amount of it. But also, I would never ever say I will debate anyone anywhere anytime. I would say I will stand up and say, "Well, if you anywhere anytime," but <laughs> I don't like to debate. I'm not that good at it. <laughs> Which yeah, isn't to yeah. say that my thoughts don't have merit and truth. Um, it's just I don't like to. Uh, you know, it's more like I'm so good at recognizing logical fallacies, uh -huh. and it's really hard to find someone to debate. Uh, when they're wrong, if they if they will do it with if they won't play debate. by the rules of logic, right, right, uh, yeah, I, I see what you're saying, and that's that's fine and because that you, don't, you don't you don't ever call people out for debates. No, uh, this guy I, did, I and it reminds people. me of, of of the Ben the Ben Stone thing where he's I I guess maybe it's even a Quaker thing where he says you know he never likes to uh, talk in any kind of definites or absolutes about the future because he doesn't know what's going to happen. Um, but this guy said I will do it. He said I if I will debate any. Anybody on this point, 
um, and we're trying to debate him on the point. And so he told a lie if he doesn't end up debating us because he will not debate us on the point. Yeah, but let's give him the benefit of doubt, and I will call him on the phone today. Okay, okay. Yep. So uh, while we've been sitting here, the, the anarcho-capitalist uh, Reddit of my I hope Romney wins is getting more and more pluses, and the libertarian one is getting more minuses. Hmm. I guess that's because libertarian. If you, if you call yourself, if you're trolling the libertarian Reddit instead of the anarcho-capitalist Reddit, then uh, you must still be some kind of minarchist. Yeah, I said I, I posted that as a comment on here. I said I love that this is getting voted up here and voted down on the libertarian subreddit, and the libertarians are giving half measure replies about how one tyrant is somehow better than another tyrant. Libertari- <laughs> libertarians are often half measure folks, and smart libertarians eventually become anarcho-capitalists. Yeah. Although for me, libertarianism includes anarcho-capitalist. Like it's a bigger circle. You know, it would include both anarcho-capitalist and minarchist. Yeah. All uh, I'd say all anarcho-capitalists are libertarians, but not all libertarians are anarcho-capitalists. Although I yeah, think there's anarcho-capitalists exactly. who disagree with that and say, "No, I'm not a libertarian. I'm a me." Yeah, and I guess that's just splitting hairs. So. Why even go and put it? Well, actually, like, you know, where in the phrase anarcho-capitalism is the non-aggression principle? It's not really in there. But I guess it is in the anarchism sense of uh, if you're if you're having any kind of aggression coming out of you, you're being a government. Well, also ripe in anarchism is no rulers. And I think rule is aggression and aggression is rule like if if you're trying to rule somebody when you point a gun at them and say give me your wallet you're you're forcing them into it you're you're saying you must give me your wallet or else you're setting up a rule and it's a small one-time rule maybe but i still would consider you a ruler so i just can't believe how many libertarians on this on, on reddit on the libertarian subreddit are arguing in favor of one uh, candidate over the other, not for the same re- not for the same reason I am. You know, I'm basically <laughs> saying I'm basically saying like Romney will screw things up more in a different direction, and that's a good thing for people that uh, live on the crumbs like me of what falls out of uh, you know on the on the philosophical crumbs of what falls off of the the there you moldy go. <laughs> the moldy bread. But they're right, saying right. like you know. I mean, they're making an argument for Romney because they're, you know, I don't know, because they don't like socialism, or which is funny because he's you're, a you're, sa- you're saying I hope he wins because he sucks so much, right? Not, and not the, I hope he wins because things will be better and we'll right. have they're saying, wonderful lack of tyranny, right? All yeah. the all the libertarian arguments that I'm pointing out are lesser of two evil arguments, where I'm saying. No, nah, we need a new kind of evil. <laughs> the, the more, uh, yeah, a new kind of evil. The, the more evil of two evils. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. you know, then there's people like um, Larkin Rose made an eloquent statement for why he's actually, uh, he's going to vote for Obama. Oh, no, really? Oh, I think he said he's going to vote for Obama because he thinks that the world he's will gonna collapse. He's going to have some kind of interesting. Uh, well, the okay, world will okay. collapse. Yeah, he, he's, he's got you know, another take on it. Okay. And I've heard a few like preppers who are saying that too, like people who are just disgusted with Obama who are actually going to vote for him because they think it's going to hasten, you know, the uh, the preppertopia. And it voting is so much work for nothing. Like even if that was your point, like, and you're not abstaining from voting because it's just. Stupid I won't go anywhere. I can't bring a gun, and you can't bring a gun into a voting place. Oh, really? That's well, like universal. Is that like an actual uh, law, or it just no, happens to well, be that way? Actually, I can't bring a gun into my voting place, which is one reason, one of the many reasons I won't set foot in there. It's at a school. Could, well, it's, it's theoretically, school. you could absentee vote, and while you do it, you are carrying go. your gun. There you go. I am armed at my desk. I just, that's that's five minutes if I do it absentee, and, you know, half an hour to an hour if I do it in person, that I really don't want to put that amount of time and effort into the state at all, so... Uh, yeah, there's that. Yeah. I can't find the thing about um, Larkin Rose saying he's going to vote for... Uh, I'm not sure of that, and I don't want to say that's true, because okay. I think if it's not true, I think he'd be really insulted by that. But I swear I heard him say it somewhere. I think it was a macho libertarian flash thing. I don't think... If he said it, I don't think he really meant it, but maybe. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Well, we could ask him. I've got his email. <laughs> I've been trying. It's hard to get hold of him these days. He's been real busy and had a lot of things going on, and uh, yeah. some like little emergencies pop up. I mean, I wrote to him a while back and wanted to do a follow up interview, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah. but I can't do it right now." So yeah. I hope things are better for him. I hope things are good for him. Yeah, yeah. 
Me too. Me too. Uh, any follow up on Foster Gamble paying for uh, Cody Wilson's gun printer? No, nah, I just threw that <laughs> bottle out in the ocean and hope it lands somewhere. I did tell him. Uh, yeah, we did. If you didn't hear the the Sunday Fiends, go back and listen to it. It's pretty good. It's live from Libertopia. We had uh, we had Drew Phillips there on the mumbles, inter- grabbing people and interviewing them yeah. for us. And you know, yeah. an interesting thing about one of those cats, I didn't realize until I looked him up later. Um, Jeffrey Lim, the guy who wants to start the, uh, from dub, dub, dub dot endorster dot net. Endorster dot net, which is a pretty cool concept. He's got to have the dub, dub, dub. Um, he is a recipient of the Thiel Fellowship, which we've talked about. It's where the founder uh, of PayPal right. pays really smart people to drop out of college and follow their dream. Yeah, yeah. And he only does it for um, 20 people a year. And, uh, and I'm sure the stuff. dream that you have to pitch has to be something that would make society freer and better. Yeah, I don't think it's, you know, I'm going to sit and bitch about the government on the internets. <laughs> <laughs> right, I have, it's not I our think dream. you have to make some, yeah, yeah, it's not, we're, we're <laughs> yaktivists. <laughs> yaktivists, yeah, yeah. I like that word. That's, that's a kind of derogatory term. Um, well, I made it up and I looked it up. And it only exists like 12 places on the internet, which means it doesn't really exist. And I made it up. But, uh, you know, some people that, have that, said that's that. a good point of how massive the internet is. I know. Like, like before the internet, you wouldn't say, yeah, it's in 12 places and be like, wow, it doesn't <laughs> exist. You'd be like, oh, cool. It exists. Yeah. But every place it exists is every single one is derogatory. Like talking about people mm-hmm. who are all talk and no action. Yeah. 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 But I would proudly say, hey, we're, you know we're, what? We are proud to- activists. Ta- talking is an action. Talking Idiots. can get you thrown in a mental institution. Yes, yes, but it's an action. You have to move your mouth. Your yeah, lips but are acting. Your tongue is acting. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, f- vocal force, cords are acting. Know, picking up a pen is force too, if you want to use physics definitions. But, uh, <laughs> no, but it's an action that's. Uh, it takes some commitment too. I mean, it takes commitment to get. You know what we do. I mean, we make zero money. We make about forty bucks a month, and that's about our expenses. And uh, you know. We're working three days a week. You're working full time at a real job, at two jobs, so you don't have to beg like all these other cyber beggars. <laughs> and uh, that, that's that's mostly it, it'll decrease a little bit, and I'll put more attention to the fiends once I get yeah. some gear. Gear yeah. that will help with, but with we, art and the fiends. I mean, I am going to get a camera too after I get the the DJ nine thousand. <laughs> that's is that really what it's called? No, no. You're, you're you're always making fun of it and calling oh. it something like that. <laughs> the so. DJ three thousand. <laughs> But uh, no, but but talking, you know, saying that yaktivism is empty is totally specious because these days things you say on the Internet can get you, you know, can get you attacked by the police, can get you targeted by the IRS. And with Brennan Robb can get you thrown in a mental institution and arrested without arrest and without your rights being read and without access to, a, you know, without the things you get when you're arrested. You know, I mean, they basically, that's what the Nazis did. They used psychology and uh, mental well, institutions to deal with dissidents. Well, also remember what Dick Dale said when he said that uh, something he learned from some monk uh, that thoughts uh, turn into uh, words and words turn into actions, actions turn into habits and habits become your character. Yeah. Well, um, that's really important, especially if you consider that what the state is, at least how we define it. Um, the state is mostly the myth that other people control you. So those are the thoughts. And then those turn into words like, hey, there ought to be a law. And that turns into actions. Uh, People are pointing guns at other people and telling you to do that thing. Uh, And then that leads to habits, which, you know, the state does that all the time. And then character, which is tyranny. So that's what we have now. So what you have to do to break the chain is is change people's thoughts to where they don't think. Uh, They don't believe in the myth of the state. They do think. They think about the myth of the state and they reject it. So what we're doing is we're trying to change people's actions when we act by talking and trying to change their minds. Yeah, and I mean, ending slavery slavery in America and communism in Russia started with words. And they started with mm-hmm. words that people got thrown in jail and beat up for. And, yeah. you know, Reagan didn't Reagan didn't pull down the Berlin Wall. Rock and roll did, man. You know, yeah. really. I mean, there's there's been a lot well, of case made for that of like, yeah. you know, Reagan just showed up at the front of the parade and, and waved a flag and said, I did this. But really, it was time, man. It was time because uh, you can't keep ideas out with a wall. And Western rock and roll got in through radio, through, you know, hand copied cassettes. People traded blue jeans and they were like, hey, we want all this stuff. You know? Yeah. 
it really does work both ways and the statists are always putting out uh media in fact they they've won the battle already that's what we're fighting against is the fact that the statists have already won the battle of ideas and we have to win it back uh you know the ayatollah khomeini came to power from cassette tapes that were distributed among people in Iran. He was in exile in France, and he would do, you know, the, the then version of podcast, basically, and rail about uh, yeah. the American infidels and imperialists and how we needed to go back to an Islamic uh, fascist state, pretty much. <laughs> um, you know, it was for evil, but it worked. His, his means of, of taking power was mailing tapes that people would then copy with tape recorders and think about that like think you know that is early podcast pre-podcasting podcasting it's the power of one guy sitting in a room somewhere in exile mm -hmm. you know doesn't matter where he is geographically reaching an audience that wants to hear it yeah so exactly. i think we're about so, the end of our time here oh you got I, more yeah you got more? No, no. That's, you got more, man. You got more. Would you? You talking to me? So I, I think I think we were very succinct and and clever there. So I'd like to leave it at that. Before I want to leave idiotic it with, and shoot crocodile and no. I want to. <laughs> someone thought crocodile was a joke, and they saw that movie. And like, wow, you, and I'm well, like, it is a joke. You can't it's make this shit up. You can't make this yeah. shit up. Yeah. <laughs> so I will end with this. This made my day. That Dick Dale commented on my Dick Dale interview. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. He said it was a that was an amazing interview. By the way, it really was. I, I and that's part said that, one of three, and it okay gets weirder it. as they go on and weirder and cooler. So uh, yeah, we should look to the future a little bit. Part two is coming out on what Saturday? No, no. You're putting up to Scott Beezer uh, on Thursday. On Thursday, and then part two of the Dick Dale is going to come out sometime next week. I try to do. Oh, a I, week thought, apart. I thought you wanted me to come out early on Thursday because so you wanted out? to still do Dick Dale on Saturday. Well, why don't we put it out today, man? Why don't you just? Uh, why okay, don't you yeah, just F FTP me the files before you go to work, and I'll do it. How's that? Okay, okay. I'll okay. FTP you the files, and I'll write the show notes and yeah. email those to you. Yeah. And, then I can. Uh, yeah. Then I can have Dick Dale come out. Uh, yeah, because I'm still like you know I've been I'm so amped to podcast and we're finishing I got to do something else. Although so. although man, do we want to do two you know finish podcasts on one day? Is that okay? I'll make yours come out tonight at midnight or something. Okay, okay, cool. I just I don't mean, want Scott Beezer to get lost in the mix because he was really awesome. Well, he's not going to get lost in the mix because you know there's there the people in, that subscribe to both will listen to both eventually, right. and the right. people that subscribe to one don't listen to the other. So yeah, here's yeah. what Dick Dale said. And I want to end with this. He said, uh, and I, and I'm not bragging about this, and I'm just I'm just like I want to read it, and it's cool, and it's like uh, you know my. He said, uh, Michael, thank you for being a true and real person, one that does not interview on sensationalism. You are a dying breed. You appreciate and write from the heart. Don't ever change. For that, I thank you, Dick Dale. And that was like, I mean, to me, that's like a blessing from the Pope to a Catholic, if I was a Catholic. It is, you know? it is. And, um, well, you, you were telling me that he was, uh, I guess, sort of disillusioned with the way some other media will treat him and will just pare him down to a few sound bites and then write at, around that whatever they wanted the topic to be. Yeah. Uh, but, but with that Dick Dale interview, man, you just let him like – Say his manifesto into the microphone. I talked so phone. little, man. I talked so little. It was, you know, and really like, and this isn't a diss, but the two people that we've complained about interviewing us who didn't give us enough time or talked over us too much should go listen to that interview and see how you do it. Yeah, it's got a lot today to say. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. you know, or you do it like we did it on Libertopia. If you're going to have 10 people on, have them one at a time, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Libertopia ended up being really good. I thought that was, it was like a bunch of mini bites of Anarchy Gumbo. Uh, you know, it was bite sized cups or yeah. shot, Anarchy Gumbo shots in little test tubes that you could take to the face yeah. and then take another one. So, 10 uh, anarchists, tapas. 10 anarchists, one cup. Gross, dude. Gross. No, no. It was ten cups. They were they were nice and self. -sealed. There you go. There you go. All right, man. One cup. Gross. <laughs> gross, Michael. See, 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 see. We, we go can't. to we go to a dookie joke. We we end on such a great philosophical and, and eloquent note, and then, then we have to bring it back. But to I set that aside for Dick, on each other. I set that aside for Dick Dale. I did okay. not do anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. You okay. Know? All right. You did. You're right. All right. Peace. All right. Peace. Hello, Freedom Fiends. It's your boy Dean from the U.S. Get the U.S. out my bloodstream. I owe me and that include endorphins. No one won't ask permission and I won't say please. Freedom fans, for fact that I gotta make clear. The Freedom Fiends podcast is covered by a Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 license. Do what you want with it and spread it around. Tell two friends. Make copies. Email it to everyone you know. Go on the site and comment. This is a conversation.
Every week, we'll have an exciting new episode where Michael W. Dean and Nima Vadadi weave their own unique take on the way the world works and how to find your place in it. Available from freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com, the Liberty Radio Network, and No Agenda Global Radio. Subscribe and tell two friends. And remember, the only power they have is the power you allow them. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal, or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money.